Pioneers! Today we will be introducing the launch of the new Pi App Engine. The Pi App Engine is a cloud computing platform as a service for developing and hosting Pi applications in cloud servers managed by the Pi Core team. Applications are sandboxed and they run across multiple servers using open source technologies like Docker and Kubernetes. Every verified developer can try the app engine in development mode. Once the app is complete and selected based on Pi Core Teams criteria, it will be hosted on production mode for free. The difference between development mode and production mode is that the development environment can only support a handful of test users and it is meant for testing and developing new applications, whereas the production mode can support tens of millions of users deploying across thousands of CPUs. If you're a developer, you can also watch two workshop videos today by swiping to the left. In today's first hackathon workshop, Lirio demonstrates how to start creating an app from the Pi Developer Portal. And if you want to tap into the core team's server infrastructure, Hugo will show you how to use the Pi App Engine to do so in the second workshop. Enjoy the hackathon workshop today. Hi everyone, I'm Lirio from the Pi Core team. In this introduction video, we will discuss and discover the new Pi Developer Portal released in July this year. Along with Brainstorm, the Developer Portal is meant to be your main companion in your development journey with Pi Network. From ideation to release, all the steps can be managed from these two utilities. Although Brainstorm is mostly meant for ideation, funding and team gathering, the Developer Portal is oriented toward managing your application in the Pi Network platform. In this video, we will focus mostly on the Pi Developer Portal and its capabilities. When you open the Developer Portal, you will see this utility presented. You can click the New App button to start the creation process. From here, you should now see the application creation form. App name and description are pretty self-explanatory. If you have a brainstorm project associated with your app, you should use the same name. At the end of the form, you will be asked for your GitHub and Discord usernames. We may want to create developers group on Discord and GitHub, so we will start collecting usernames now. These two fields are 100% optional. Soon, we want to create a bridge between Brainstorm and the Developer Portal so that your whole app lifecycle is seamless. In the middle of the form, you will see a question asking if you want the app to be self-hosted or hosted by the core team. Self-hosted means that you are the one handling your application on production. You can have your own infrastructure but you are the one taking care of the scaling and the availability. If you select this option, you will be asked for the front-end URL of your application. As explained in previous videos, Pi Utilities are actually websites running in an iframe. Therefore, you must provide this URL for the Pi browser to be able to display your app. On the other hand, hosted by the Pi Core team means that we are taking care of your application. No infrastructure management, no availability issue, you simply take care of the code. Although the first option is available for everyone, the second requires you to pass the brainstorm developer test. As you all know, Pi Core team is currently organizing a hackathon on brainstorm. Upon joining the event and saying that you are a developer, you will be sent to a technical test. When Brainstorm and the developer portal are connected, passing the technical test will automatically open the next steps for you on the developer portal. Finally, when you select this option, 
instead of a front-end URL, you will, you will be asked for a GitLab username. This will be useful for us in order to provide you with a GitLab project already integrated with our development pipeline and deployment pipeline. You can now click the submit button and follow me to the next page. If you choose to host your app yourself, you will need to verify your domain ownership. This is meant to avoid developers creating app from websites they do not represent. For instance, you shouldn't be able to impersonate the wikipedia.com URL. In order to prove your ownership over the domain, you will need to place a specific file at the root of your domain. The content of the file must match the content of the text field in the gray box on the UI. When you're done placing the file at the root of your domain, you can click the Verify Domain button. You will either see an error message with some debugging information, or the gray box should disappear and a green check mark should appear next to your domain URL. If you see this, congratulations! Your domain ownership is now verified and you can access your app through the browser by typing your domain name in the address bar. With the Pi SDK comes the Pi API, where you can execute requests against the Pi backend. For now, this is only meant to handle payments, but more abilities will be added in the future, like creating chat conversation on the Pi chat from your application, for instance. At the bottom of the page, you can see a section called API Keys. You will need it to access the Pi backend as an application developer. Keep it safe though, anyone with this key can pretend to be you. Note that accessing the Pi public blockchain does not require any API key. You can simply produce transactions using your app's private key and then submit them directly to the blockchain through any public node. For instance, your own node one of the PyCore teams, or any other node that is running the blockchain API service. Finally, Scopes is a feature that allows developers to request different levels of access to users. By default, apps only get access to an anonymized user identifier. But if it's essential for an app to know its user usernames, then they must request the username scope. If an app intends to request its users to make Pi payments, then it must request the payment scope. The request scope are visible to the user. Thus, to maximize the number of people comfortably installing your app, we recommend only asking for the minimum number of scopes absolutely necessary for your app to function. Anyway, you can always ask for more scope later. Note that the scope facility is currently being actively developed by the core team. With this new tool and the integration of Brainstorm, you will be able to manage your application from an idea to its public release. Creating an app on a blockchain has never been easier than now. Feel free to try out the SDK and show us what you can add to the Pi Utilities ecosystem. Thanks for watching. Happy Friday!